Welcome, everyone. Uh, I am Andrea Kaczynski. Uh, I'm with The Voice of Hope with Damon Looks. This is my new platform with Damon Looks. And um, I'm going to be doing a lot of interviews here. Uh, I currently uh, am on the Voice of Hope Facebook page, which you may have seen me there a lot for the past couple of years, and Beverly Nation's uh, online radio station. Uh, so now you're going to see me more on YouTube with Damon Looks and other interviews to come. So my very first guest, I'm so excited, is Jerry Petito. Hey, Jerry, how are you doing today? Hey, Andrew, I'm doing great. I'm so excited to be your first guest. You want to know why I'm really excited about today? Why? Because not only is it your first show on Damon Lux, I'm your first interview, and I just got the okay from Simon & Schuster, my publisher, that my book today has been revised. Oh, awesome. That I know. So it's awesome. so cool. <laughs> that is so awesome. I'm so excited for you, too. I can't wait for it to come out. And uh, Jerry and I met on uh, with by a friend of mine, Krista Joy, and we're now currently um, on the same radio station, Beverly Nation. <laughs> and um, so today, Jerry is going to tell us the story behind her getting into radio. So, you want to talk about that, Jerry, and tell us how that all started? Yes. So, I have a surprise for you. I okay. want to read my poem called My Story. Can I start there? Yeah, of course. Okay. My Story. I thought I'd share my story in a more poetic way to give you guys some insight on what I want to say. I grew up in a crazy Italian home where boundaries did not exist. No such thing as personal space. As I grew up, I started to resist. My sign is a Pisces, and it really holds true. I'm artistic and curious with all that I do. My heart on my sleeve is where it was worn. That good and that bad fish always made me feel torn. Everything possible there was to explore. My bucket list was huge. Every day I wanted more. It got me into trouble, from art school into drugs. Traveling all over the world, even tasting some bugs. Getting pregnant, then married, and of course came divorce. I loved myself. I lived myself unmanageable. Challenged everything with force. Outside of the box is where I belong, but I always made right whatever I wronged. I fought structure and rules and never regretted. I only worried when needed. Small stuff never sweated. Being self-employed too young and making too much money, it got me into trouble. Now life was not so funny. Being so young and being so sick, I woke up and thought, I need help quick. So I stopped all the crap and be begged God to hear me. He saved me that day and he, he decided to spare me. He saved my life and gave me my calling. Now go help others, the ones that are falling. My entire life since I was young was finding the broken who I was among. 25 years later, God said, write our book. I smiled and thought, okay, now I know. <laughs> this is what it took. I'll never regret my choices because I'm the person I am today. I'll always pay it forward if I can help in any way. Health coaching's my passion on my radio show, too. I love helping others. It's what I'm made to do. My life-changing choice that I had once made over 29 years now, my debt has been paid. So, in a nutshell, wow. that's my life story, girlfriend. That is beautiful. Thank you for sharing that with us today. Jerry writes lots of beautiful poetry, and uh, this is the book that she wrote. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. And this book is to anyone out there struggling with addiction, and um, she's going to talk about that too, and you're going to hear more about this story. So... Jerry, uh, what got you into radio and uh, on your journey for towards radio and uh, what proceeded after that? Okay. So uh, I'm really excited about this platform today with you, Andrew, because I've been interviewed several times, but, but interviews, you know, are 15, 20 minutes with other people as well. I've never really been able to get my entire story out there. And I think it's important that we do that today. 
especially today on this anniversary date with my book and all. Thank you. Yes, so um, let me start from the very beginning of what brought me to drugs. We'll start there a little bit, okay? Okay. Okay, so when I was a young teenager, 13 years old, um, I was touched by a neighbor. And, you know, I was a tough, tough kid, and I'm saying that for a reason. And I also did not look 13. I'm saying that for a reason that I'll, I'll reveal. And he was in his late 20s. So it's not like, you know, a 40 or 50-year-old guy, not that it makes it right. Mm -hmm. But I honestly did not look like a kid. I had a 36 C cup chest. I talked tough. I had, you know, I, I was very, um, I was mature. I came from New York, moved to New Jersey. So I was a mature, tough kid. So I remember saying to him when he touched me and had his hands on me, I said, you have less than 30 seconds to get your hands off of me or my father will be put in jail for murder with his bare hands. So he did. He went, Tuh, took his hands off of me. Well, back then, you got to remember, I'll be 60 years old. So back then, things were a little different. Today, I just wanted to say this. If any child is ever touched today, you go right to the police. I don't care if it's the father. You go right to the police. Back then, it was a little different, right? right. So... I didn't want to hurt his family, but I knew I had to tell someone. They were moving away anyway, and that was fine. So I told my uncle, and my uncle approached him and said, you're lucky you're moving away, blah, blah, blah. So I felt better about all that. So, But this is what happened to me. It wasn't me getting touched that made me do drugs later on. It was I couldn't live with the fact, as I got older, did I allow a child molester to go? So that's what happened to me, Andrea. I couldn't live with it. And I didn't know who to turn to. I didn't know who to talk to. You know, my parents are both gone to this day. Till their death, they never knew this happened. I couldn't do it to them. So that's what made me start my journey with the drugs. And I want to say something, and then I'll get back to that. All these years later, a few years ago, there was a family party here, and that family was invited from another state, and I didn't know they were going to be invited, and uh, he approached me after the party when no one was looking, and he tried to kiss me. Now he's in his late 70s, and I'm in my late 50s, mm -hmm. and there's a really good point to why I'm telling you this. He not only tried to kiss me, when I laughed in his face and said, really, you're still a pervert? He smacked my butt, Andrea. Wow. But here's what happened, and this is important. This is the most vital part of my story. I smiled at him and said, you should count your blessings for three things. One of them is that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, and I'm going to forgive you because I should. And I said, and you know, God just did me a favor here today. And you know what that favor was? After right. all these years, God freed me of knowing I did not let a child molester go. Because if I did, Andrea, he wouldn't have been interested in me in my late 50s. He was just a dirty 20-something-year-old guy. True. Yes. So that's why I said in the beginning I didn't look like a child. And the reason why this is vital is God was so faithful to me. After all these years, he set me free because I still struggled with that until that night. So I have right. been freed from that thought that I let a child molester go. That's how faithful God is. Yes. Think about that, right? Mm -hmm. that so so my drug addiction, you know, I, I do want to say one thing about that. Even through my drug addiction, I never, ever really hurt um, anyone other than my family. Um, I hurt my business. I mean, I had a beauty salon back in the day, uh, made a ton of money in one of the most prestigious towns in the Princeton area, Lawrence area. Um, but, you know, I was too young to be making that kind of money. And back then, all the salons were, were making a ton of money. I was too young. So it aided in my drug addiction. Um, so I'm going to tell you the day that I realized it's over. My rock bottom. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um 
I want to thank God for my parents, first of all, my brother, because my daughter spent a lot of time at my parents, and she was never neglected, thank you, God. Okay, I was stupid. I did a lot of stupid things, but my daughter was always taken care of, and I made sure of that. Um, so what happened to me was this. I owned a 1990 Eldorado black and gold Cadillac with Elvis license plates. Are you talking? Listen to me. Is that flashy or what? Yeah. Okay. That flashy car and those license plates saved my life. Two o'clock in the morning, whatever it was back then, I'm with my girlfriend in my car in the heart of Trenton. Now, back then it wasn't as bad as it is now. Now, now Trenton is really, really not a very safe town, unfortunately. And that's very sad for me because Trenton was the place to be a very long time ago. Um, my drug dealer um, didn't have our heroin. So he had to get in the back seat of my car. We had to drive with him in the back seat of my car, listen to this story, two blocks away not knowing an unmarked police car was following us. They watched him get out of my car, go to a house, get the drugs, get back in my car. Here's how this went and why it saved my life. My license plate were recognized by that officer. See, I had a beauty salon, Jerry's Final Touch. I'm an open book now. And one of my good friends to this day, she was also a client, and I used to go have lunch with her on a regular basis. I would meet her at the courthouse in Trenton. She was a municipal court judge, the boss of all the judges. Oh, wow. And this police officer recognized that flashy car with those license plates and knew it was me. So he called the judge in the middle of the night and she said, get the guy out of her car, tell Jerry to go home, get some sleep and get help. Wow. Thank God for that cop calling the judge. Thank God for that flashy car with those Elvis license plates. Yes. Right? Yes. Saved my life. Well, not only did I throw him out of the car, I threw the heroin out, threw my girlfriend out, changed my life. I made a decision that, w that I was done. I couldn't believe what could have happened that night. I could have been put in jail. My poor family, my poor daughter, that's all I thought about. My, the Petito reputation, my family are hard workers. Every one of them is known in this township. Um, I have a gold card from the chief of police. My family, I can't even stress what a beautiful family I'm from. And the thought of me destroying them was overwhelming, more so than destroying myself. So I made a decision. And I put myself in Princeton House. Back then, we stayed for about 31 days. And I did everything in my power to get better. I listened to everything they told me to do. And I graduated the 30-day program. And I left. I got a sponsor like they said I should. And I went to meetings every day for a month. But here's what changed my life. God, because something told me these meetings were not for me. I'm not telling anyone not to go if that's their only support group. I'm not telling anyone not to go. But for me, it was not for me. I couldn't deal with standing up in front of all these people saying these words. Hi, I'm Jerry. I'm an addict and I'm powerless over my addiction. First of all, I was not powerless over anything. I made the decisions to use the drugs. I made the decision to go in and get clean. And I made the decision to not to stop using. So how am I powerless? I'm not using drugs anymore. How am I still an addict? No. So that started my journey. I gave my life back to God, asked him to please seal the deal for me. Help me really, really, truly conquer this. And he did. That's how faithful God is. So that started me on my journey to, I'm going to say my health career, because I ended up with two cancers back in the day, colon cancer and breast cancer. Based on my mother's genes, they all died of colon cancer and breast cancer before they were even 70. 
Oh. And um, heart attacks, they were all obese. None of them took care of themselves. Very different from my father's family. My nonna died at 100. My aunt and uncles, most of them are still alive, 80s and 90s. Incredible. So you see, yes, genes play a big role, but it's up to us to say, now we're going to break the cycle of those bad genes in our family. It takes one person. So true. Once you, yeah, once you break that cycle, right, then mm -hmm. your genes are better for your child and so forth and so on. So, so mm -hmm. what I did was um, I traveled all over the world through Lenox Hill Hospital. My cousin worked there. We went to Russia for the first trip for a month back in the day when it was communist. I even had machine guns pointed at me. Um, wow. It was an amazing, amazing experience for me. And then we went to China, all over Japan, everywhere for a month, another trip. That's when I started realizing what was going on behind the scenes with our health care. And this is important. I want to say all this because it's very important, Andrea. Yeah. I realized how our food supply is killing us and making us addicts. The amount of sugar we allow in, the, in our foods here, they don't allow in other countries. McDonald's, Starbucks, um, Coca-Cola, they can't go to these other countries until they change their formulas. In one can of Coke here, I believe it's nine and a quarter teaspoons of high fructose corn syrup now, not even just sugar. Mm -hmm. In other countries, there might be one teaspoon of real sugar. They won't allow the same formulas. The majority of countries that pay for their people's health care want to keep them healthy. Countries like ours where we pay for our health care, they don't want to keep us healthy or they don't make money. I had to say that because it's very important. Food is a big part of the problem. Sugar. Every addict is addicted to sugar. Once they can get off of that, they can stop being an addict because their brain thinks they're still putting in heroin, opioids, drugs. So that's what keeps them believing they're powerless over it and they're addicts. So I had to say that to clear that part up, okay? I believe addiction is not a disease. It's a dis-ease of the brain cells because your brain cells are altered during addiction, no matter what it is. It could be gambling. It could be sex. It could be food. No matter what it is, your brain cells are altered, mm -hmm. the power of the mind. But once you can clear your brain cells and get rid of all the toxic food, sugar, ingredients, right? Mm -hmm. Crap you're eating, all the fast food, people, places, and things. Once you can get rid of all the toxicity in your, in your life, your brain cells go back to normal in one year. Wow. Yes. So having said all that, I think we need to start looking at addiction differently in this country. And this is why. These meetings are there originally they were meant to help people okay and i put mm -hmm. this in my revised edition about bill w um his intentions were really really good what helped cure him was niacin the one that makes you purge and sweat just like saunas they're super healthy for you oh yes mm -hmm. back then when he was healed because a friend of his a doctor gave him this niacin he approached aa but by then, the government already infil infiltrated into it. And he said, I want to give all the addicts niacin. And they said, absolutely not. We need to keep them addicts. Wow. So having said that, that's addiction. So if we could look at addiction differently, understand you have choices. You are not mm -hmm. powerless over it. It is not a disease. And you can help yourself. I think we can change what's happening today because there's not a person out there who doesn't know someone or has been affected by addiction. And that's sad. So now I came through all this. I came through all this. And about five years ago, I was actually woken up by this tap on my shoulder in the middle of the night. And I heard a voice and it said, write your book. And I said, write my book. Yep. So I laughed, giggled, and said, okay. Uh, it's a very short book. This one is under 50 pages. It's called I'm Not an Addict, I'm Just an Ass. I'd rather be a smart ass than a dumb ass because 29 years ago I was a dumb ass, but today I'm now a smart ass. And 
I believe God wrote it because I wrote it in three weeks. And a friend of mine came and put it on the computer for me because I hand wrote it. <laughs> and uh, she said, Jerry, we're going to send it to many publishers because her uncle, he's gone now, but he was a publisher back in the day. And she said, they may not accept it yet. It might take years, but we're going to send it to a lot of publishers. Just, you know, keep the faith. I said, no, no, no. We're only sending it to one, Simon and Schuster. God wrote this book. It's going to be published right away. She laughed and said, all right. We sent it with her number attached because I'm terrible at tech. So she was helping me with all this. And five days after my book was sent, I get a phone call. I think it's Andrea. I think it's her. And she says, Jerry, are you sitting down? We have Simon and Schuster on the other line. And I was not shocked at all, Andrea. And they said, Jerry, we love your book. We're publishing it. And that was it. They have a new division called Archway Publishing, and that's where it was published through. Wow. So when that book was published, Doc G, who started Hamilton Radio over 20 years ago in his basement, Gene Perro, he's on Facebook, <clears throat> he's the main owner of Hamilton Radio. He started mm -hmm. this. He now has two other partners, um, Ruben and Monk. Awesome. And he got in touch with me, and he said, we'd love to interview you on Hamilton Radio through his daughter's show, DJ Danny. Mm -hmm. I said, absolutely. Are you kidding me? So we met for lunch one day. We talked and everything. And that was the beginning of the radio career. So I was interviewed by DJ Danny. And <clears throat> after that, they offered me my own radio spot to have a show. Mm -hmm. And at first, I said, I'm not sure about this. Let me think about it. Because I thought, I'm not, I didn't go to school for that. I mean, the funny part about it is I've never shut up my whole life, even in school. Um, you know, I was in trouble every single day for talking. And uh, I should have just said yes right away. <laughs> I should have been doing this my whole life, right? Yeah. Um, and I thought about it. And I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to do it. So I told him, yes, let's try this out. And the rest is history with Hamilton Radio. I'm on Hamilton Radio now, I guess, close to five years, four and a half years, whatever it's been. Mm -hmm. And um, my shows have been incredibly inspiring. Mm -hmm. And then once I was on Hamilton Radio, PANJ Radio and I connected. I started doing shows with them. Um, Rob Bell, Vinny was an incredible host who had me on his show. I had him and he worked with Rob Bell close to cl close by. And so I was doing PANJ radio as well. Um, it's so funny because there's a gentleman I want to name, uh, Vince Scott, and he is from Hamilton radio as well. And freedom truth radio, I believe is his, um, Name. I think that's the name of his show, Freedom Truth Radio, if I'm not mistaken. I hope it is. Um, we joined forces to do Exposing the Truth Part 1 and Part 2. Mm -hmm. And someone was watching his show because he's his cousin, and that was Brother O. Oh. Our, our 2019 Internet International Hall of Fame DJ, mm -hmm. our honeybee Olasky. Mm -hmm. It's his brother. And he wow. called in to say hello to his cousin and met me through there. Oh, wow. So I didn't know it, but he was checking out shows for a few months after that and got in touch with me and wow. said these words to me. I'll never forget it. Jerry Petito, this is uh, brother, o, brother O from, you know, Beverly Nation. And I would like you to come along. And he said, uh, you know, you'll be my only white host at this point. You'll be my only Caucasian host. And I cracked up and said, guess what? I'm in. That is so so awesome. that's, that's crazy. So that's what started with Beverly Nation. And then, of course, Damon Lux. I was his first host to do Damon. Now, um, 
I get um, I get a connection with Remember Then Radio. And they made an exception for me, which I didn't even realize at that time. They don't really have, they don't really allow, so to speak, any other DJs on their show that are affiliated with any other stations, but they made an exception for me. And my shows are just flying there as well. Um, I'm a talk show host, the only talk show host they really have. I also do entertainers on there. Um, and that now I do the Jerry Petito podcast as well. Um, it's just been an incredible journey. But now I want to just tell you about revising my book real quick, and then you can ask me any questions you want. And I want to thank you for giving me this platform. Oh, you're welcome. Um, so I revised my book, like I was saying, and I got the okay today that it's now completely done. And, you know, I put all my accomplishments in there and there was a reason why I did it because I want the addicts out there to know if I could do all this in my late fifties, 29 years after I got clean, they can do anything. So age is only a number. Yeah. So in, in 1993, I became a certified fasting and detox, detox coach. In 2001, I won two poetry contests where they published my poems. Wow. 2008, I became a vegan chef from the Natural Gourmet Institute in New York. 2016, I became a nutritional health coach. In 2016, in April, I became a published author. Wow. From September 2016 to recent, I became an internet international radio show host. Um, you know, uh, so incredible. I can't even imagine all this happened. March 2019, I received a certificate of merit for broadcasting out of Germany with the nomination for the 2019 Internet International Hall of Fame. And December of 2019... I was incredibly honored to be inducted into the Hall of Fame for broadcasting, along with Brother O from Beverly Nation, who was inducted mm -hmm. along with me for, for DJ. I mean, that's incredible, mm -hmm. right? He's an incredible DJ. Yeah. And then January 2019, I became a recovery coach finally. Wow. So there you have pretty much my story. Um, and now... You can ask me any questions you want. Well, thank you for sharing all that. And I wanted to say, too, I wanted to congratulate you. Just two days ago, you had your two-year anniversary at yes. Beverly Nation's O&E. And yes. two days later, we're doing this interview, and today is... You got the news about the revision of your book. How awesome yeah. is that? God is so good. Thank you. I broke my 33rd record, I believe it was, on Beverly Nation Tuesday night with over almost 970,000 listeners, girlfriend. Did you hear that? That is so awesome. When I hear her say these things and all she's went through and almost a million listeners <laughs> on her show. And Crazy. It, it's just remarkable at all her accomplishments. Some days I'm like, wow, you know, all that she does. And it's crazy. Uh, I wanted to go back to, I love this story, part of your story. You know, I've interviewed you uh, on other platforms. And now that you're out of your addiction, I know uh, not too long ago, maybe a couple years back, can you tell everyone the story of the man that messaged you and reached out from hell. Okay. Hell. <laughs> All right. So, yes, I can. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, all right. This is where I'm going to have you maybe laughing and crying. I'm not sure. Okay. So, you know how I always say God is so good and so faithful. And, mm -hmm. you know, things just keep coming back around, right? Full circle mm -hmm. in our lives. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter what's happened to us in the past because if you stay faithful with God, he will stay faithful to you and he will show you things you cannot believe. Okay. So when my book was published about a year later or so, maybe not even a year, I get a message on Facebook. Hello, ma'am. 
can I ask you a question? So everyone out there who knows me knows, don't call me, ma'am. Please don't call me, ma'am. I know a lot of people think it's for respect, and I get that, but please don't call me, ma'am. And I joke around, and I laugh, and I say, guys, you could call me hot stuff, stupid. I don't <laughs> care. Just not ma'am. All right. Yeah. So I, I message him back, and I say, hi, yes, um, as long as you don't call me, ma'am. I said, I can answer any questions. I says, are you okay? And he said, well, I saw a book with your name on it, and I wanted to ask you what it was about. And I said, it's about recovery, about addiction. And I said, are you okay? And he said, well, can I ask you a question? And I said, of course. So um, we started talking. Mm -hmm. And he said he was clean and sober for about 18 months, but not by choice. He was a very big drug dealer back in the 80s and 90s, and he's in a halfway house, and if he does not stay clean and sober, he's going away for a very long time, okay? Mm -hmm. So I said to him, do you believe in God? He said, not anymore. I said, okay. I said, why don't you do me a favor? I said, um, give me your address to the halfway house, and he was nervous about giving it to me. I was laughing because I'm five foot four. Like, he's this big guy, tough guy that can go to prison, but here he was afraid to give me his address for the halfway house. Mm -hmm. I said, you reach out to me. I only want to help you. I want to send you my book. And I just got, as a gift, which was the weirdest thing as mm -hmm. well that week, a, an addiction Bible. Wow. So he said, okay. I made it to him. He actually was reading it because he was messaging me for the next two weeks questions about my book and the Bible. He was reading it. So I'm answering all his questions. So I said to him, you know, we should really see each other, you know, through Skype or whatever. Yeah. And he said he was ready to pray. He wanted to accept Jesus. Mm -hmm. So I said, let's do it face to face. He said, OK, I'm staring at this guy who now had gray hair. And I said to him, can I ask you a question? He said, yes. I said, back in the 90s, the early 90s, did you have long, wavy, you know, like uh, dirty blonde, brownish hair? He said, yes. I said, <clears throat> did you ever go to a salon called Jerry's Final Touch? He said, absolutely. It was on Park Parkside Avenue, and he told me exactly where it was. He said, I, I sold drugs to her. I said, that was me. You were my drug dealer. Wow. So he's still in my life. We communicate. Mm -hmm. I actually got to meet him. He came to an event um, mm -hmm. to give me a hug. He's doing great. How about that? He's out of the halfway house. He has his own apartment now. Mm -hmm. um, how about that? So here, mm -hmm. all these years later, God allowed me to now help my drug dealer from back then. That's crazy. I love that story. I love every time I hear that story because it's just like when you were telling your story about when, you know, you were um, touched as a child, a young woman, you know, a teenager. And then yes. later on in your life, uh, God redeemed that thought process that yes. you had of you had let a pedophile go, you know. And then here it is again. He brings the person that sold you these drugs for you to help. Okay. And I'm just like, wow, God is so good. We don't see that in the midst of us coming out of our story. And uh, I know so many people out there can relate. Maybe you've come through a story like Jerry has. Maybe you're going through a storm and you don't see what it's going to look like on the other side when that storm, you're, you get through it. But Jerry is living proof. You know, God has bought, brought redemption to so many parts of her life that she can never imagine. Five radio stations, vegan chef, author, um, recovery coach, yep. uh, health coach, health yep. coach, um, mother, grandmother of two. What did I miss something, Jerry? No, I mean, it's amazing, isn't it? it? Is. It's incredible. It's just amazing. And I always say, like Jerry was saying, she's in her late 50s, it's never, you're never too old to be what you were meant to be. 
That's and right. a lot of people think so many times, oh, I'm too old to start doing this. I'm too, you know, it's too late for me. No, it's not. You know, me and Jerry are both living proof. She, That's right. I'm 50. She's in her late 50s. And I didn't start The Voice of Hope until a couple years ago. As long as you're living, you're breathing, there is still hope to come out of any situation that you're in. And God can use that mess to turn it into a wonderful message like Jerry's today. And I'm so grateful, you know, that she went in depth and shared out her story. Is there any more parts that, you know, you would like to share with someone out there who may be, you know... Well, yes. Um, all right, you know what? Let me read a couple more poems because you know me, right? Yes. I, I speak best in poetry form because not only am I an artist and a poet, people listen. People hear better when it's in poetry. Mm -hmm. So there's two poems I really, really want to read, and, and they'll get it a little bit, okay? Okay, go ahead. This one is called Choose Wisely. That's vital in our lives, mm -hmm. choosing wisely with every decision we make, right? Right. So a healthy outlook begins with you. A life fulfilled is up to you, too. A healthy diet is where you start, but a healthy mind is the major part. Remove from your diet all sugar, my friend. All processed foods will kill in the end. Try being vegan or at least mostly greens. Veggies will heal even unhealthy genes. To get rid of toxins, niacin's the key. It re will remove even cravings, flushing out needs to be. Sugar is a drug your brain thinks it is. To get you real clean, go take my quiz. The real way to detox is not with a drug. It's through nutrition and also a hug. Your brain sure can heal. I promise you this. If you do a cleanse at the drug, you won't miss. Nutrition's the key. Don't be fooled. What NA is teaching must be overruled. You're in charge of life. Choices you make, keep them healthy, is your journey to take. Life is made of choices we all must pick and choose. We need to be real careful when breaking all the rules. I'm not saying be boring or never have fun, but try to keep balance with things you have done. Too much of anything may hurt you in the end. Try to maintain balance so not to lose a friend. Even the people with time you do spend, choose your friends wisely or you may lose in the end. The choices I made from when I was young have surely changed. My thoughts are now swung. So know your worth. Say it starts with me. You are the treasure and you own the key. So choose wisely, guys. That's first and foremost. Mm -hmm. Once you choose wisely, you'll be able to choose change. So I'm going to read this poem now. Change is your choice. I had a life-changing moment that I knew had to be. The only way to change things was to first start with me. So I looked in the mirror and woke up one day and thought to myself, I needed to pray. So I asked God to change me, to help me stay strong, to clean up my mess, to right what's been wrong. Cleaned up my diet, I cleaned up my room, I cleaned up all habits with this old dirty broom. I kept going forward and never looked back. I refused to derail, stayed on the right track. I realized my worth and all that did matter through my selfish behavior, the lives I had shattered. I finally decided at 30 years old to stop abusing my body, my mind, heart, and soul. My life-changing choice that I had once made, over 29 years now, guys, my debt has been paid. So you read all my thoughts on how to stay clean. It's all or nothing, my friend. There's no in-between. To live or to die is a choice you must make. Your life is not worthless and you're not a mistake. One day at a time is a slogan you've heard. It works if you work it while applying his word. For you to get healthy, for your mind not to fail, escaping reality will keep you in jail. With addictive behavior, sex, drugs, food, or money, substituting addictions, that isn't that funny. I'm not an addict. This too shall pass. I'm not an addict. I'm just an ass. May the good Lord bless and guide you. There you go, guys. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Jerry. I don't think that could have been said any better. And Thank you. You're welcome. And thank you for coming and being so transparent and open, you know, and telling your story. People need to hear that, that... You know, even from the deepest depths, I mean, 
when you think back, you know, all that, I know Jerry, she uh, has told me too, she uh, went to art school and, you know, she does beautiful collages with all her, her guests coming on and everything. And lots of times we don't realize, uh, we get sidetracked, derailed, I call it, on our journey in life. You know, like Jerry's was addiction. And, but in the end, you know, after um, she got through the process of uh, getting off the drugs, God started using her gifts that uh -huh. she went to school for in the beginning and using all the talents that she had as she got older. Uh -huh. So what you go through, it's still God is, he always has a plan, Jeremiah 29 and 11. He says, for I have a plan for you, plans to prosper you and give you hope and a future. And you may feel hopeless because of the situation you're in right now. But take inspiration from her story that all the things that she went through and she planned for her life, nobody plans to be an addict. Nobody plans to be in uh, terrible circumstances, whatever you may be going through out there. But they're is hope as you can see that through her story that in the end God used it for his glory because here she is on all these different platforms spreading his word and it's about her relationship with Christ uh. and she's not doing that in a church it's on this radio platform and I was wanting you to talk a little bit just a few minutes about that about your relationship with Christ and how okay. we, we don't have to be in a church to have okay. that relationship. So, oh my goodness, Andrea, I got a message from someone. I'm not going to give her name, but I'll be talk I'm going to talk about what you just asked, and, I and then I'm going to read this message that someone sent me. Okay. So I'm not telling anyone again not to go to church, okay? I love church. Mm -hmm. um, I went to Israel close to 20 years ago or so through um, Calvary Chapel on Philmont Avenue here in Philly with my dad. My dad accepted Jesus in the tomb, in the tomb of Christ. Oh, wow. Imagine that. I'll never forget that. That was the most incredible experience of my life, being oh. in Israel and walking where Jesus walked and going into the tomb. I mean, so I get I get excited when I talk about that because that mm -hmm. to me is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. um, I got baptized in the Jordan River. I mean, come wow. on, I brought water back from the river, you know? So I am super, like, uh, what's the word? You know, I get excited and, and passionate mm -hmm. when it comes to Jesus, not a church, all right? So there are great churches out there, but the mm -hmm. problem is too many people start putting their faith in the church, in man, in religion. No, 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 guys. God said relationship, mm -hmm. accepting Jesus, it's the only way through Christ to know God. He did not say a church. He did not say a priest, a pastor, a rabbi. He said God, Jesus through God, period. That's in the book. So when I really got it, I said, church is in you. Church is you being with all these people and helping others. I'm going to tell you something. I owned a poker league back in the day in Mercer County called Ms. Nine Owl Poker. And, of course, I got a lot of slack from people, you know, saying, but you're a Christian. Why are you in, in these bars and restaurants playing poker? Well, first of all, it was for gifts. It wasn't for money. And second of all, we were in restaurants that had bars. And do you know how many people accepted Jesus Christ through those games through me? One at Hooters. Imagine that. Wow. <laughs> All right. Wow. So what I want to say to everyone out there is, oh, before I forget, there's two incredible videos, my favorite videos of all time. Go on YouTube and simply type in why I love Jesus and not religion or why I hate religion, but love Jesus. This wow. young rapper. Oh, my gosh, it's off the charts. And he explains it perfectly. And then the other one is church pew or bar stool. Mm -hmm. And it's a young pastor sitting in a church on a bar stool with a, it's insane. And he says, 
where would you rather be? Well, guess what? Me personally, I'd rather be on a bar stool helping someone who needs it because that's where the sinners are as myself, okay? And that's where the people in need are. The people in church have it all together, right? Okay. So anyway, um, I had to say that so you really understand and get God just wants you to have a relationship with him. So these radio shows, I kid you not, have just opened up doors for me to help others. Um I'm going to tell you two silly little stories real quick about how God is so faithful to me. Every time I go to God with a silly thing, I'm like, all right, Lord, you got to hit me over that with this one. Mm -hmm. Okay. About, uh, I gave up the league about two years ago mm -hmm. and there was no more. I mean, online gambling came back. The leagues were dying, whatever. But a year before that, I was really ready. I didn't want to do it anymore. And I said to God, Lord, come on. I really don't want to do this anymore. Let me know that I don't have to. That was the night I had the game at Hooters. And a young guy, I end up talking to him and he's crying. He didn't believe in God anymore. I asked him one question. And this was the question. And this is important. I hope this question right here makes everyone out there think. I said, why don't you believe in God? And he said, well, because there's so many hypocrites in the church and this and that. I said, you're right. There are. But that's man. Let me ask you a question. You do know Jesus existed, right? He said, absolutely. So what did you think of that man? He said, oh, I thought Jesus was a great man. He tried to help everyone. I just didn't believe he was the son of God. I said, well, then he couldn't have been a good man. Because how could you think someone's such a good man but they're a liar and they're a blasphemer. If he wasn't who he said he was, he's deceived millions and millions and millions of people over thousands of years to believe he was. Mm -hmm. He said, oh my gosh, Jerry, I never thought of it that way. I need to accept Jesus now and prayed with me in the parking lot of Hooters. Wow. Okay, so that was one story. So God said, guess what? You're not getting rid of the league yet. I said, okay. So then he let me know in a year I could get rid of it. Another silly little story. Um, you know, someone posted a new Christian and new Christians, they're going to, they're going to find their way. But a lot of them in the beginning are like, you're doomed. If you don't do this, you're doomed. You're going to hell. Everyone's going to hell, you know, but they'll find their way. Someone posted, you shouldn't idolize singers and this and that, or you're going to hell, you know, whatever. So I said, all right, Lord, this is a tough one. You know, I'm an Elvis fan. I have an Elvis poker room. I said, come on, if you want me to get rid of my Elvis stuff, I will, but you got to break you got to hit me over the head with this one. Well, guess what? True story, Andrea. The very next day, I get a call from a pastor friend who lives an hour away, him and his wife. I love mm -hmm. them. And he said, Jerry, I just thought you had to have something. Give me your address. i got to send you something. He goes, I've been looking at these for years. My mom passed away. He didn't tell me what they were. I said, no problem. Guess what came in the mail? What? Three original 45s of Elvis Presley in the old hard cardboard cases and 77 cents. They were wow. his mother's who was an Elvis fan. So God wow. said, guess what? You don't have to get rid of your Elvis stuff. Wow. Okay. That these are just a couple of the silly things mm -hmm. God has brought to me. Well, here's what happened recently. Okay. Okay. And this is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, the day before, I am, you know, I've been home a lot through this virus, and I'm just going to put it out there. I believe I had it. I've never been this sick this long in my life, had every single symptom um, except the complete shortness of breath. I even had the body rash. I had the pink eye. I had, you have no idea, um, foot issues, everything that they finally came out with later on and said was part of it. So I've been home for a couple months, a few months, actually, never been this sick. And a couple days ago, I said, Lord, I'm getting, I think I'm getting tired. I've been doing radio now for close to five years. And I think today, right now might be my 410th show, Andrea, with you, wow. something like that. Okay. Wow. Um, and I said, I think I want to take a little break. So that's what I said to God, right? Mm -hmm. Well, guess what came in Messenger last night? What? I'm going to read a message, and I've shared it with you so you know it's not me saying it, that this woman said it. Mm -hmm. I get a message saying, hi, Jerry, 
I want to tell you how wonderful and a beautiful blessing you are in our world when it comes, when it is normal or not. I heard your sweet and wise and amazing show last night. You more than rock. You proclaim Jesus, his truth, and speak it to the airwave listeners. You spoke with, con with his confidence, wisdom, and love to your amazing guest last night. Thank you for being Jesus to hundreds of people outside the walls of the organized church. You are a missionary to our society. I am renewing my pledge to pray for you and for angels to encamp about you, your home, studio, heart, mind, and soul. So, and then she said, ha ha. The interesting thing is she heard me by accident. Wow. Okay. Wow. So I, that was confirmation from God. Guess what? You're not taking a break yet. <laughs> I, that is so beautiful because uh, I know we had talked about that. And I was sharing a similar story. And God will give you those God winks. Saying, <laughs> I, I, I got you, girl. I got you. I know you got me, girl. I yeah. mean, listen, it's, he's never, he's always on time. Mm -hmm. He was giving you a little wink there that said, all right, Jerry, I got he's you, girl. He's always on time, girlfriend. He is. And when you least expect it and when you're so exhausted, you feel like you can't go a minute longer. And I so know you, it, it's been rough for you the past few months. I know you've not been feeling well. And she has not missed one show. I know. It's and just hard because I'm a people person. I need to hug. I need to hug. I know. <laughs> I know. Me too. We'll uh, hug again soon. This yes. all, all will pass. And, you know, I'm so glad you come on and shared all these just beautiful things, you know, these even things that God, he didn't have to do, but. He just shows up and keeps you on the path saying, yes, you are doing what you're supposed to do, you know? He even is so gracious to do that. And, you know, a lot of people, you know, not that, um, you know, I don't knock church at all either. I, no, I, no. I, I love church. I, you know, there's a beautiful church going uh, that I go to down the street. And a lot of people don't realize, too, that church is just a hospital for hurting people. So when you go in the church, a lot of people sometimes are not, they're not uh, walking in their relationship. They, they may be new Christians. They may have been Christians for a while. All the relationships may be different with God. So they may not, they're not intentionally meaning to hurt you. No. It's just out of their walk and their humanness that some, we all make mistakes, you know. And if you have been to a church and you have been hurt to someone, try to remember that, that they didn't do it intentionally. And if you feel they did it intentionally, remember, hurt people hurt people. People hurt people. people. But healed people heal people. Yes, and that's what we're doing here today. I'm glad you said that, Jerry, because that is so true. Because, you know, and I'm learning this more. You know, and I know God puts us together. I call it divine connections. Jerry's one of those divine connections. So are you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and it's like we balance each other out. And it's it's like sometimes uh, I'm one of those people that I have a hard time sometimes just being really blunt and telling the truth. <laughs> I want to like, as Shannon would say, put sprinkles on it. And... <laughs> But, you know, me and Jerry will talk, and then I'll get to thinking about it, and I'm like, she's right. I just need to come out and talk about it and tell that person and get it out. And once I do, I'm like, what was I worried about? Yep. And Jerry is so good at that. And, you know, we all can learn that in our walk, you know. And so many people, we're all learning every day a lot. Uh, every, every day. As long as you're alive, you're going to learn. You're going to make mistakes. But just remember, if someone made a mistake and, you know, hurt you and you know they're a Christian, don't take that against believing God. in God. Yes. Because He loves you. And it's we're all sinners and we all yep. ask to ask forgiveness every single day. So yes. just please try to remember that. And yes. Before we end, I wanted you to let everybody know when your new book will be out, where they can get your okay. uh, book you have now, and where they can reach you at and watch all the shows. Okay. So um, they can, of course, check me out on Facebook first and foremost. I'm on, like, you know, you're going to laugh. I'm on 
LinkedIn, I'm on Twitter, I'm on all these other things, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm on YouTube, of course. Please, please um, connect with me on YouTube and uh, what's the word, Andrea? <laughs> on YouTube, Facebook. Yeah. Uh... I want them to... Um, Get me on YouTube. They to um, subscribe. I want you to subscribe, subscribe. to my YouTube channel. Yes. It's so funny. Yes. I'm on all this stuff. My daughter and my grandson, who's 19, put me on everything, and I'm not great at it all yet. But Facebook, I am. So you could grab me on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Say hello. Send me a friend request. Mm -hmm. My book is "I'm Not an Addict. I'm Just an Ass." It's on Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, dot com, uh, Simon and Schuster, Archway Publishing. It's out there. Um, but Wait until probably June 1st because the book was okay today, completely done being revised. So I'm, I'm sure by June 1st, that copy will be out. Um, so let's see what else. Oh, and I'm on, uh, like I said, all the radio stations, uh, Hamilton Radio, Beverly Nation, Damon Looks, the Jerry Petito podcast, Remember Then Radio, and you can check out some older shows on PANJ Radio. Um, mm -hmm. Everything's out there. Just put my name in it. And that's another cool thing, Andrea. Mm -hmm. Did you ever Google your name? I put my name out and all this incredible stuff comes. And I'm like, yes. how is this happening? <laughs> I have to tell you a story on that really short story. Yes. My grandson, Caleb. He Googled my name one day and he came running to the room so excited and I'm like, what's going on? What? What? And he's like, I Googled your name and you're all over these places. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. And he's like, you don't, cool. you don't sound excited. And I said, oh, well, what? I, I, yeah. He goes like, you're on Google. And I'm like, okay, yeah. I'm getting it. It's sinking in. I'm getting it. Listen, so, I was blown away. You're right. It's so cool. Yeah. So here we are. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yay! Over all these platforms, and and Jerry too. Uh, like she said, if you go to uh, the Jerry Petito show. page, yeah, show yep. the Jerry or Petito, my or my name, yes, or her name. All of these links are listed. She'll post all of her shows, so you don't have to remember all of the different stations she was talking about. She right. posts everyone and tells you who's going to be on there, and. Um, you'll know when the book comes out. I'm sure she'll put a link to that. Yep. And uh, you can also get purchase your book on Amazon right now, right? Yep, that's right. right. And so you can get this book, I'm Not an Addict, I'm Just an Ass. You can get this also on Amazon. And um, then she's going to post when her new one comes out. So before we end, I had okay. a little poem that I read to you. Yay! Yes. <laughs> you know what, wait, before you read your poem, yeah. thank you. Thank you because, um, well, let me say thank you to you first. We'll end with your poem. I want to say thank you, first of all, for having me. You're welcome. This was an incredible platform to just really tell my whole story. Thank you. And I love you and I love what you do and you are the voice of hope. Okay, I love it. And when people read poems to me, I'm just so flattered. So I can't wait to hear a poem. And I want to thank all our listeners out there as well. And mm -hmm. please, please subscribe to both Andrea Kaczynski and my YouTube channel. And also The Voice of Hope. Check her out. And share this show, guys. There you go, Andrea. Thank you, Jerry. You're going to make me cry. I <laughs> love you too, girl. And um, this poem... Is when Jerry won the award for the 2019 Internet International oh. Hall of <laughs> Fame uh, enshrinee as radio host of the year. Oh. And um, I'll never forget that night. Um, it was very emotional. I remember hearing her daughter uh, read a poem, and I wrote this, and I sent it to Jerry privately, and I wanted to read it again today. It says, Congratulations, Jerry, on all you do. Brother O named you the Jersey Jewel. Jersey Jewel you are, leading a path for others to follow by far. Brother O came to say, Join us and be excellent in every way. With every show, you amazed us by day by day. With five internet uh, networks, you blew us away. With high hopes and faith, you were voted into 
the International Internet Radio Hall of Fame 2019. So I come to you today and feel very honored to be your friend. And I thank you so much for sharing all you do all to the end. I love you, Jerry. I love you too, Andrea. Thank you. I love you. I love you too. And I thank you for coming uh, on The Voice of Hope, my very first show on YouTube, and uh, sharing your story. It, it was amazing. So check Jerry out, the Jerry Petito Show. And uh, sorry, I'm getting tongue tied here. And uh, I know you'll be blessed by the story she shares. And subscribe to her YouTube channel. Subscribe to my channel because we're going to be having more and more stories on here. So, is there anything else you'd like to say before we end? Just, again, thank you. What a beautiful poem. I'm just so overwhelmed. And just thank you for this amazing show, amazing platform. You're so welcome. You're so deserving. I love you, girl. I love you too, girl. And uh, so as I always end all of my shows, I just want to tell anyone out there listening, if no one has, you've heard no one tell you today, you are so loved. So wherever you're at in your part of the world, get out there and do what we're doing today and spread some hope. So join me back here next time on The Voice of Hope and get out there and spread that hope. God bless. Much love. See you next time. Bye-bye.